What I'd like to do today is talk about uh, Unit 4, uh, Unit 4A in fact, uh, on the cell membrane. This will be the structure and function of the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane. Um, plasma membrane or the cell membrane is this small little purple layer that goes all the way around the cell and it's going to control everything that goes in, everything that comes out, and actually let these cells reach an equilibrium or what's called homeostasis. This is a highly magnified image of the cell membrane and you can sort of see it's a double layer. It's called a uh, phospholipid bilayer. Um, so you look, see, see you've got two layers and this is going to end up being that phospholipid head or phospho head and then the lipid tails down here. This one being a water loving layer. Um, the extra and the intracellular fluid being mostly water and then the tails inside are going to be the um, hydrophobic. Um, they're going to stay away from water as best they possibly can. So, cell membrane, plasma membrane, this is the boundary to the cell. It controls whatever enters and leaves the cell and again it's reading, letting the cell reach homeostasis. If it needs water, water comes in. If it needs salt, salt goes in. If it doesn't need salt, salt gets pumped out. And it is selective, selectively permeable. So, it's only going to let certain things in passively and then actively if we need to fight it against the concentration gradient we'll actually use ATP um, produced by mitochondria these little double membraned um, binary fissioned uh, self-contained DNA um, which we talked about in unit 3. Uh, some things can pass through the cell membrane other things cannot. Okay, this is a animation of what's called a fluid mosaic model. Fluid mosaic model means that this thing is fluid. It moves, it changes shape, and because it's got an aqueous solution on the outside, an aqueous solution on the inside, um, it actually um, moves. Um, this is a um, protein um, that's got a lipid marker on the outside. This is actually a marker protein. Um, but I'm going to push play and you can see how this thing moves. And notice these phospholipids don't have to pay any attention to each other. They can be pretty much anywhere in there that they want. Play it again. Proteins can move. So it is a very fluid mosaic made up of a whole bunch of different things. Model of a cell membrane. Fluid mosaic is a mosaic model. Um, describes the motion. It's the makeup and the motion of animal cells primarily. Plant cells have that cell wall on the outside which uh, eliminates some of the motion, although it will move. And cells reside in a very waterly, watery solution, extracellular and intracellular. Um, so we've got a cytoskeleton on the inside. This is probably one of those uh, fibers or um, microfibers um, which are going to actually help um, keep the cells shape and you can see we've got the phospholipids, which are these colored, these crazy tailed things. We've got proteins that are sticking into it. We've got cholesterol, these little match head looking things. Um, we've got glycophosphates, um, which are actually these little things that are popping up. They're fats that stick up. And then we have carbohydrates which are sticking out of it as well. Um, so, it's basically it's talking about how this thing moves. It's the fluid mosaic model. Phospholipid, um, this is the phosphate. It sits on top of two lipid tails. There's a saturated tail and an unsaturated tail. It has to do with the bonding of hydrogen going around it. If it's missing a hydrogen, it can double bond the carbon and that actually puts a kink in it. Um, this is the phospholipid hydrophilic, hydrophobic. Hydrophilic, hydrophobic. Hydro meaning water, philic um, like love, and phobic meaning like afraid. So this is the water-loving side, side, and it actually seeks out aqueous fluids, whether it be extracellular or intracellular, these phosphate heads, um, that's where they want to be. And hydrophobic, that's the water fearing, it's repelled by water, and that's why these tails tend to stay toward the center, and the loving side on the outside, and the hating side, or the afraid side on the inside. And there's a little cartoon talking about water and fat, can't be seen together, um, why? Because I'm fat. And they both start laughing. Transport proteins. These are actually embedded into that phospholipid bilayer and these are going to allow materials to go through it that normally can't fit through things. So this is a protein that helps transport molecules from high concentration to low concentration um, that are too, simply too large for simple diffusion. 
So this is going to be a passive transport that requires no energy whatsoever. And it happens anytime there's more on one side than the other, they're going to try to reach equilibrium. And water is a good example of this, although water doesn't need to have these uh, transport proteins that can fit right between these phospholipids. Marker proteins. That, that's these things that are actually sitting up. There's a protein with a, f a fat sticking up out of the top, and these guys are just basically saying, I'm supposed to be here, I belong to you. It's not a seek and destroy thing. So marker proteins are like a label on a cell. They allow other cells to identify it. All your body cells have markers so that we can actually identify them as part of your body and or things that come into your body and beta um, would, would not have these markers and they would be identified as not you and you would hunt them out and hopefully try to kill them. Um, you can see again here's that cytoskeleton. These are microfilaments um, that are sitting in there. Um, you can see the proteins are holding on to it. We've got things that are moving along the side. Um, these are transport as well as support. They're held together. Um, it's actually a quite complex system um, for something that n almost nobody talks about, but it's a fairly important part of the cell. Receptor proteins, exactly what it says. They've got a, a site here that's actually going to be a, shaped for a certain material, almost like enzymes. Um, it receives chemicals and signals from other cells right on this binding site. And what that'll do is it'll actually cause this um, protein to have a reaction down inside the cell which will kick off some sort of other reaction. There are the markers again in that glycoprotein protein with the fat sticking out. And we'll talk about the cholesterol in a second. There's that phospholipid bilayer, water loving, water afraiding sections of it, um, philic and phobic. Then we got cholesterol actually inside uh, that phospholipid layer and what the, you remember these guys were dancing around and moving these tend to actually kind of slow them out they help firm up the whole cell membrane um, so it's not too fluid and it also in certain sections of this it becomes less permeable so that small molecules um, that dissolve in water um, can't get through it as well Here's a uh, picture of a uh, cell membrane. Um, I showed you this picture. Here's another picture where we've got proteins that go through, um, integral proteins. We've got uh, proteins that have channels through them, channel proteins. We've got peripheral proteins that are only on one side. We've got those glycoproteins with the markers sticking out the top. And then we have the cytoskeleton underneath um, where they can grab onto it. So there's that phospholipid molecule, phospholipid bilayer, hydrophilic heads, hydrophobic tails, um, that's the cell membrane. And here's a site that you can actually create your own cell membrane. Um, I'm going to let you uh, take a look at that. Um, it takes a few minutes to go through and I'd really like to get through this section. And I think that actually is it for the section. That is 4A, where we're talking about structure and function of a cell membrane. Thank you much for stopping by.